Speaking of program, the second part of the program today, uh, interviewing Mr. Alton A. Burden, engineer at the World Trade Center, one of the planners there and so forth. And really, health is so important. I know we talk so much on this program about health, but we also have to sometimes talk about the background of what makes a healthy mind and what you have to persevere to keep a healthy mind to do some of the things you want to do in life. And uh, this takes perseverance. It takes uh, vision and all those kind of things. And so uh, uh, health encompasses so many things. It's just not your, your body, but it's your mind also. And how you do maintain that healthy mind is to be able to proceed and conquer uh, the impossible. And that's what I'm dealing with today, with dealing with the impossible uh, mind, the, the mind that can go so many ways uh, and as long as you take care of it and educate well and so forth. And so we're going to continue the story of planning of the World Trade Center and how Mr. Alton A. Burton played a major role in there and his background a little more. Again, hi, Mr. Burton. All right. Yes. Just to backtrack a little bit, as I mentioned before, that the World Trade Department was formed around 1962. It was a long time ago, so I, I may be a little off mm -hmm. in my thinking. And they asked if I would participate as a World Trade Center planning engineer. And as I said before, yes, I did, but I didn't do all the work. There were four of us, four different disciplines, three different disciplines, really, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, a structural engineer, and a civil engineer. The structural and civil is a civil engineer, and as I said, I am a structural also, but I had a lot of experience in civil engineering from Marine Terminals Department at the World Trade Center okay. from 1955 to about 1961-1962. As I said, the World Trade Center was originally scheduled by the Rockefeller Group to go down on the east side near the battery, but we're along with the stock exchange, but the logistics for that spot just weren't the right thing, and they eventually decided on the area where it was presently built. In 1962, when a 63, I'm sorry, that's the wrong date, in 1962 about, they started the World Trade Center Department, I participated as the civil engineer with my civil engineering background, with the Marine Terminals Department, with all the upland areas, with all the piers we built before, it was my job to have the area cleared before any construction could be even done. With all the utilities in there, I had to meet the co Mayor's Coordinating Council Committee, all city departments, and we had periodic meetings to determine what utilities were in the street, I had to show them what we had proposed. I had to find out what they had and what they could do to relocate what they had. And if they could, maybe we can improvise something, which we did in many cases. You know, we have what they call as plans for areas to be developed. You'll find that when you get in there working on those plans, you come across areas where you just can do what's shown on the plan you have to alter some things, so we had to do some altering down there with some of the sores, water lines, or what have you. So they have what is called as-built drawings. So as you're building, you make your drawings then <laughs> to see. show what the next pe person coming in is actually in the street. So my work was quite extensive in that area. Our structural engineer, he had his own job, and our electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, they had their own jobs to do. After I got to the stage where, and by the way, I worked in the World Trade Center Department from 1962 to 1969, and I'll tell you some of the experiences in that, but at 1969, I left the World Trade Center because Rockefeller again came out with a new department they formed called the New York State Urban Development Corporation. And they asked if I would come and sort of head that up as the chief civil engineer and project director. I said, well, I'll have to speak to the Port Authority about that. And they said, 
all right, we release you for 18 months on a mobility move. Well, after 18 months, we were in so many things at the Urban Development Corporation. In fact, we built Roosevelt Island, a lot of places in Rochester and Buffalo. And I said, no, I don't think I can come back to the Port Authority at that time. So I stayed there at the Urban Development Corporation. And I lost my contacts as far as what happened. But just as I was leaving, Tower One was just about topping out. Topping out means the highest piece of steel in Tower One was being placed in position. They're still building up, and Tower Number Two was coming up alongside as its brother or sister, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know what happened after that. Other people stepped in. But getting back to the World Trade Center, the first thing we had to do, you know, when you put a building in, you have to find a firm foundation. Normally, they place piles in the ground, and they put a pile cap on top of that, and you put the building foundation on top of the piles. We said with a 110-story building, no way will we do that. We have to get down to bedrock. And they take borings to find out what's down there, but still, that wasn't good enough. We wanted to excavate to see that rock, feel it to make sure it was bedrock and not boulders. What we did then, we figured we have to build some sort of a wall around there, and they referred in the papers a bathtub. In a bathtub, you try to keep water in. But this bathtub was to keep the water out. Right. And the Hudson River was right beside where our tower was going up. You know, at the beach, when you dig down in the sand just a little bit, water stopped coming in. Mean sea level was about seven feet below the surface of the ground in that area. So when you dug down at least seven feet, you start hitting water. We decided then we had to put a wall around the area, and that wall we called our retaining wall, or the bathtub, the outside the bathtub. The bottom of the bathtub was the rock that was in the bottom. In order to do this, we had to dig with our dredge material down in 22-foot sections, 22-foot section lengths, and that length went for about 3,000 feet around the site at the wall, but we had to do it in 22-foot sections for this reason. As you dug down, water started to come in, but we didn't want the Hudson River water to come in. We built what was called a slurry, a slurry which was water mixed with a volcanic ash, uh, some clay, a bentonite solution was a concoction. And what this concoction did was, as you dug down, if you had just plain water there, like the Hudson River water, the wall would slough off and fall off into place because it wasn't rigid enough to stand on its own. This concoction we had sort of made a jelly surface on the wall so it kept the wall straight up and down. It was a beautiful thing. We did that all the way down to rock and dug into the rock for two feet so we could tie the bottom of the thing in. But we have this slurry in there now with this concoction. In order to place steel reinforcing in there, we had to lay the steel out on the ground because concrete, concrete is very strong in compression, but it's very weak in tension. It will take tension, but since it's unreliable in tension, we always place reinforcing steel. This reinforcing steel was laid out on the ground 70 feet long, seven stories high, because we had to go seven feet, 70 feet down into the ground. Wow. We did that in 22-foot lengths because you would have a massive thing that had to be picked up, reinforcing bars, had to be picked up by a crane and dropped 70 feet down into the slurry they had into the rock down below. Wow. So we did that in 22-foot section. Then we came in with our reinforced concrete, and concrete is a beautiful thing. It has the ability to harden by chemical action underwater, underwater. We placed our hoses down to the bottom of the 70 feet, pumped the concrete, which consists of cement, sand, and gravel, gravel being coarse aggregate, depending upon what the consistency you want. That concrete being heavier than water would displace the slurry that we had We'd catch that slurry so the next 22-foot section, we could use it in the next 22-foot section. 